Okay, I thought I would discuss absorption refrigeration. I have got some numbers, these numbers are from I forget which book I took it from, but these are numbers from basically I will put the picture down and put the numbers in. You now we have I am going to discuss this was omitted earlier when I discussed refrigeration, we discussed vapor compression. But we did not discuss absorption refrigeration. I postponed this because we needed to discuss solutions and enthalpy concentration variations. I mean, vapor compression you have a throttle wall in which the liquid refrigerant is throttled and it comes out at very low temperature you have liquid here it comes out at a lower pressure this is p high this is p low and this passes through a heat exchanger which absorbs heat from the surroundings thereby cooling it and uh, this uh, this is vapor here this is still liquid and this is vapor. This vapor is then compressed. I think I'll just you do some work on it. W s dot. I have some liquid at some m dot, some flow rate. This compressed liquid is then cooled in a heat exchanger. Where heat is removed. And this is your vapor compression refrigeration. In absorption refrigeration, this part of the cycle remains the same. This part with absorption refrigeration, exactly like in vapor compression refrigeration, you have a pure liquid that comes in here. At this stage, this is compressed, this is still vapor, this vapor is cooled and condensed. In this liquid, at some rate, m dot is throttled to a lower pressure. So, this pressure is p high, it works between two pressures. So, on the thermodynamic diagram, pure fluid diagram, the process looks like this. If you want to label these points A before throttling. B, C, and D. So, A before throttling, B, C, and D. In absorption refrigeration, what you do is just turn the same thing around, it is it this part is the same I still have the throttling part I have another heat exchange. this part is common then this in this case usually the refrigerant is a fluorohydrocarbon or a variation various refrigerants now r 1 o 3 a and so on some refrigerants i have uh, what you do is take in this case it's usually ammonia i'll put down some numbers i've got the numbers from the ammonia diagram i put the numbers here for example typically This point is what have I called it here? I think I'll relabel these things. B is here. Throttle heat exchanger. I don't know what these equivalent numbers are. Just before this is, I've called this C. 
you do not mind let us change some of these labels alone because for refriger absorption refrigeration I have got this notation. This is C after the uh, after throttling it is D and uh, before the throttling it is C. It is B wait a minute yeah it is C and then uh, before this this is B and this is A. Okay, that means the corresponding points here uh, before C and D, this is C D then uh, throttling, then heat exchanger to D, this is evaporation D to A and A to B. B C D A is common to the absorption refrigeration. So, I label these points this is B this is C okay. then I have um, D after this this is A here I have an absorber this is usually ammonia ammonia comes out of the it is after throttling this is the place where the heat is picked up this is cooling and this is high pressure and this is low pressure. So, these two pressures this pressure and this pressure are determined this is P high this is P low these are determined by the thermodynamic properties of ammonia and the temperatures you want. For example, in absorption refrigeration typically it is large industrial applications you try to keep this at 10 degrees uh, C at 10 degrees F and the other one will be room temperature 80 degrees roughly. So, the corresponding saturation pressures are the saturation pressures of ammonia corresponding to those temperatures. So, those two are fixed. So, this part is still the same A B C D A is the same instead of using a compressor you do it slightly differently compressing a gas requires much more energy than pumping a liquid and also you take advantage of enthalpy changes during absorption. What I have here is a liquid is water and this ammonia comes in it is absorbed here. So, a concentrated solution of ammonia will be taken out here this is uh, got all numbers so I want to keep the labels the same this is G and uh, this is typically this is a centrifugal pump so it is shown in flow sheets uh, this this is pumped up to what is called a regenerator. from the regenerator it comes down here again. Okay, I will put down some concentrations and we will describe the whole process because I have some work here. I will describe the whole process again this is absorber this is regenerator and what comes out here is ammonia negligible amount of water. So, this part of the cycle the right hand side is the same as the upper part of this cycle except instead of the refrigerant I have ammonia instead of R 103, 104 etc I use ammonia as the refrigerant. This part I will put down some numbers to give you a feel this is it works between uh, 10 and 70 degrees F. So, this is at 10 degrees F 
this is at 70 degrees F. The corresponding high pressure will be saturation pressure of ammonia at 70 degrees F. This is the saturation pressure of ammonia at 10 degrees F and I will put some numbers down directly at this the regenerator this this thing is at 175 degrees F and uh, within parenthesis I will put down enthalpy values I will tell you where I got them from one chart is coming to you now this part is pure ammonia so you just have to take the pH chart and read the enthalpies on it just I've these numbers I've read I've just put it down here and this one is 70 degrees 70 is at the outlet and then this is 122 is the enthalpy all the enthalpies are in BTU per pound refrigeration industry still works primarily in British units then I have throttling the temperature here is 10 degrees F and the enthalpy is 122 it is isenthalpic this here after the heat has been absorbed it is uh, this is just evaporation so it is still at 10 degrees F but the enthalpy is 613 that represents the latent heat of evaporation of ammonia. Thanks. then after absorption what you get is a saturation this temperature is 70 degrees F it is heated essentially in the absorber the temperature goes up to 70 degrees F with uh, an enthalpy of minus 25 in the same and the concentration is 46.5 percent ammonia this is by weight of ammonia. this is pumped in the condition here the enthalpy here is minus 24.7 from minus 25 to minus 24.7 that is all it takes to pump a liquid in the regenerator outlet this is E this is 175 degrees F and 35.7 percent by weight of ammonia I think that is all you need. So, this is 10 this is 175 this is the liquid coming back this is water with 35.7 percent this absorbs more ammonia and the concentration of ammonia increases to 46.5 percent these temperatures this 10 degrees in 175 depending on the amount of each substance you are going to get a final temperature of about 70 degrees F. This is pumped here in the ammonia that comes out here at 175 degrees finally comes to I suppose 70 degrees is what I should put down when I say high pressure it is at 70 corresponding to the temperature is 70 only here at the outlet similarly it is not 10 in the, in the heat exchanges low pressure is at 10 degrees that is all I need then I have some numbers here okay for the absorption part I have given you a chart there this chart is from I think it is Daubert's thermodynamics book but it is also available in Perry the more comprehensive chart is available in chemical engineers handbook you should realize when you look at enthalpy this is absorption and essentially uh, by heating it you are reducing the solubility so you are removing the ammonia from there. The big difference between that and this this looks much more complicated but you have a compression huge compressor for gases here for the vapor phase here here you have only a pump which is much more rugged and the work for pumping a liquid is much less than the work required for compressing a gas from here to here. So, you are hopefully you have less this thing and because the pump maintenance is trivial this part of it these are only stationary devices this part of it is maintained easily for large scale refrigeration even now this is what is used. Now 
let me do the calculations for this part I have got a table of numbers but let me explain if you have a concentration a solution the enthalpy of a solution of ammonia in water typically would be simply I use x1 h1 or I should use small h1 plus x2 h2 plus delta h of mixing this is measured in a typical chart like this we will assume h1 equal to this is pure say this is ammonia let us say this is water 2 is water these charts are prepared so when you mix charts you have to be careful h1 at some reference temperature equal to 0 similarly h2 it could be a completely different reference temperature equal to 0 I will call this reference T1 reference T2 but if you take differences between two points in the chart your enthalpy differences are what you will use but when you use it in conjunction with a pure ammonia chart you have to make sure that in the ammonia chart also the enthalpy has the same reference value. So this part of the data you will get from a pure ammonia chart this part of the data this side left side you get from enthalpy concentration diagrams. Actually the part of the diagram that you will use here is very very small part of this whole diagram I have given you. You first of all you will use only the saturated liquid part of it it is a function of temperature it should actually strictly be a function of pressure as well but the properties of the condensed phase are negligibly dependent on pressure. So really pressure would not come into this thing so you will find there is a saturated liquid curve you take 60 degrees for example curve the 60 goes out take 100 for example at 100 degrees F this saturated liquid has a concentration of 0 0.7 right 0 0.7 in this case this is mass fraction so it is 70 percent by weight of ammonia for ammonia water system these two are approximately the same because the molecular weights are 17 and 18 so mole fraction and mass fraction would not be very different but anyway about 70 percent is the saturated solution represents a saturated solution of ammonia in water by weight. So in this case you have in the absorber when the ammonia comes out here this is in the in the case of this thing what you do is simply your this is your refrigerator in the refrigerator there is a coil to which the heat is absorbed from the outside so the temperature outside is maintained at 10 degrees actually in practice if this is 10 this temperature outside will be about 12 or 13 degrees you will have some differential actually 5 degrees F typically so 15 degrees will be the refrigeration temperature. So this will pick up the heat and this is essentially isobaric it is just at one pressure it is evaporation. So this is pure vapor ammonia which is bubbled through water this absorber design is important they will have various devices for making sure that the ammonia is mixed well with the liquid. So what you get out of it is a saturated solution of ammonia at the temperature that you have that comes out of this balance at 70 degrees you can read the saturation temperature here you know gas solubilities will decrease as the temperature goes up. So here let us assume that read this as the saturation concentration I will uh, double check on that but the this thing the nature of the graph is correct there will be lines representing the saturated liquid and you should be able to read the saturation temperature from that at the solubility point. I think there is a shift in numbers there but you will find differences will probably be the same I will come back to it. So at 70 degrees F 46.5 is the concentration of ammonia and uh, you pump this up here you essentially you have to provide heating uh, this 
there will be a heater here where you supply heat this thing will be heated to 175 degrees as is shown at 175 degrees this is the solubility I will put down these numbers this is solubility at 175 at 70 degrees F is 46.5 percent by weight of ammonia and at 175 degrees F this is 35.7. So, I have some numbers to be calculated. this quantity the quantity that is flowing here is x and I have to get my notation right because I have just put down numbers here and then yeah this this circulation rate is m dot everywhere here it is m dot this is x and this is y. It is the question is what are x and y given this these are the conditions that are given the user specifies 10 degrees here and 70 degrees here because this is when you lose heat to the air to the atmosphere. So, if this is if the outside temperature is 80 degrees F then you will get about 70 here and similarly if you keep this at 10 you will probably get even 20 15 or 20 degrees inside the refrigerator. So, these are user specifications this determines the pressure automatically this temperature determines the pressure this temperature determines the low pressure in this case the pressures are also given this pressure at 70 it is 128 and 38 this is 128 pounds per square inch absolute and low pressure is 38 pounds per square inch absolute. These are this whole thing is from the ammonia chart. So, working between two pressures 38 psi <laughs> and 128 psi. Now, this part is what you have to design you have an absorber and a regenerator and uh, what you are asked is what are x and y and of course, the total m dot this enthalpy that you pick up from the refrigerator is fixed per unit mass of ammonia because it comes from this chart here this is the amount that you pick up you are looking at after throttling you are looking at this part right H A minus H D is the enthalpy per pound that is picked up. So, your total refrigeration demand divided by this will give you m dot. So, this this m dot is fixed again in the design of the refrigeration unit. So, let me put down this chart you can verify this my suggestion is I am sorry that this chart turned out to be the wrong one please look at Perry handbook of chem have you ever ever looked at this book you cannot graduate without looking at the book it is called handbook of chemical engineers and it is still finally, the book you refer to when you actually go to industry and do any design. The thing is it is it is fairly boring but if your life depended on it, it becomes terribly interesting. <laughs> because if your boss says design this and uh, if you do not design it in one week you lose your job that one week you will read Perry like nobody's business and you will have great value for it how wonderful in this book is what information it gives you. <laughs> Actually every one of us gets used to one edition I have got used to the fourth edition, but a lot of the data is the same in subsequent editions also a lot of it is thermochemical data. I do not know if this is available actually I am so outdated in terms of ICT that I do not know if this is available online I have to double check I have not it is available online should be by logically. So, you can look it up in your own thing then the chart will appear and I have got this I took it from the fourth edition and I do not know why anybody would want to steal a fourth edition from me, but let me I will check 
who has it this is uh, uh, okay the basis here is enthalpy h of ammonia you know i told you about the reference the basis in the h ammonia enthalpy of pure ammonia saturated liquid at minus 40 degrees f is equal to 0 no, we can check that here if you look at this is mass fraction of ammonia if you look at mass fraction equal to 1 you get the enthalpies at uh, saturated liquid at minus 40 degrees this is he is given you saturated actually you cannot see it in this 160 goes in steps of 40 so you can sort of extrapolate I still cannot it seems in this case the enthalpy comes to below 0 right on the chart on the x y axis 0 is uh, actually does not correspond to saturated liquid in any temperature but it corresponds to something like just below the saturated liquid at 100 degrees something. but 140 degrees. So, there is a translation of numbers here. So, this chart does not give you these numbers, but uh, let me put down the I will put down a chart table here. I am going to say state this is C D A G F I should have made a I can make a Xerox copy of this or I will print it out for you because I have scribbled all over it. This is 70, this is degrees F, 10 and 10, then 70 again, then 175, 70 twice, 175, 175. I will double check this. The pressure here is 128, 38, 38. This is PSIA and then 128, 38 three times, the rest is 128. Then the enthalpy here, this is uh, 122, 122, then 613 minus 25 minus 24.7 and have two more 80 and 696 then weight percent is 3 or 100 percent this is pure ammonia when you begin with the solutions G is 46.5 and then uh, the last two are this is where is B and B is 100 percent again and uh, before B this is 35.7 okay and then the flow rate for these three it is M dot and then for G this is x as I have marked there, and then it is x again, f is also x, and then this is y, and again m dot. do all the calculations per ton of refrigeration this you are starting here at C this is m dot at 70 degrees F at 128 psi A and enthalpy of 122 the enthalpy remains the same across the throttling process 
So, you still have 122, but the temperature is 10 degrees right? and the pressure here is 38 psi. Then passes through the refrigeration, refrigerator where it picks up the heat and the enthalpy at A is 613. So, if you want the m dot let us say 1 ton of refrigeration you know this is 200 BTU per minute or 12000 BTU per hour divided by your enthalpy at A minus enthalpy at D this is 613 minus 122. Okay, this is your m dot got this tell me what the value is but I have done this it's, it says h c minus h b I made a mistake here circulation rate is determined here and tell me this value you have to work this number out I think I made some mistakes no no this is all right this comes to 24.4 pounds per hour correct this is okay H A minus H T but 524 is all right 24.4 okay. this is your this is your evaporator and this is your condenser. So, you can calculate your condenser heat load Q c dot is simply this 24.4 into <coughs> the difference in enthalpy between C and B that is 696 and 122. This will be as far as system is concerned there it is losing heat there will be a minus sign this comes to 14 minus 14000 BTU per hour then if you do a balance around the absorber this is the calculation that you do to calculate these quantities you need to know how much of water has to be used in circulation you will get m is equal to x plus y or m dot is equal to x plus y no not m dot sorry m dot plus y is equal to x y is coming in m dot is coming in m dot plus y is equal to x And then m dot into h a enthalpy at a plus y into enthalpy at e the energy balance is equal to x into enthalpy at g. Now, m dot is known and all these enthalpies are known. you can play around with these temperatures if you like but these are just happened this 70 is prescribed you can play around with 175 you can go up or down 10 degrees 15 degrees and so on the point is to get a significant difference in the solubility 46.5 because that difference is what will give you the difference in the enthalpy of absorption you get essentially these are heat effects in absorption and d absorption if you like I have solved this you can double check these numbers you get um, one forty five point four for x this comes to one forty five point four and your y is one twenty one Y 
your pump work W s dot is between see this is adiabatic pumping W s dot is simply delta h minus delta h. So, enthalpy 24.7 minus 25. So, you get 0.3 in this is your this is your enthalpy per pound into 24.4 which is m dot. It comes to 72 something the matter here. This is 24.4.3 is the enthalpy difference that is correct. Pardon? No, it should be multiplied by x that is the mistake you are right and x is 145.4 you are right. Yeah that comes to 46 well, you can be numbers are approximate. this is your BTU per hour. Whereas, your vapor compression if you had done vapor compression you would have had to take it from this enthalpy of 613 to 696 directly and 613 to 696 is what. So, compare C f W s dot for vapor compression 6 one, 696 minus 613 which is 83 but into m dot only in this case m dot is 24.4. It comes to 2000 that is the difference. Usually used in large installations, basically ammonia is toxic for use in homes. So, it is only industrial this thing where safety can be guaranteed that they use this absorption refrigeration. Very large devices, but you can see the big difference in the work required. Any questions? Basically, I will just go through this. This part of it is identical, so there is nothing to discuss here. It is identical with your vapor compression refrigeration, it is fairly trivial. This is the only part that you replace. You go through a absorption process, and at the end of the absorption, you look at the enthalpies here. A enthalpy is you go from 613, now I am looking at A to G. I have gone to an enthalpy of minus 25 here, and then I go through a regeneration. Regeneration goes from effectively G. I do not have a label for this. Yet. Is this F? we have called it f. I have an f there, yeah that is f. G to f is a negligible thermodynamic change, but f splits into two streams at 175 there. So, from f you are going to e f to e 
enthalpy changes from 24 point minus 24.7 to 80. There is heat addition here, I do not have to put a coil here, there is heat addition here and heat removal Q regenerator and this is heat removal here Q absorber. In fact, those numbers also I have calculated, the absorber comes to write it here, yeah, Q absorber is um, 28297 and Q regenerator is 3279. These are big numbers. Remember this is what you have fixed, Q evaporator is fixed, this is 1 ton, this is this 12,000 BTU per hour. So, you are comparing vapor compression with absorption refrigeration for the same refrigeration load. So, you will have to buy 2 more heat exchangers essentially. What people do in practice is that these 2 streams are heat exchanged. This is what in chemical industry that is what makes it so confusing. This is the process, but in practice you have this going up, you are going to add heat here, you are going this is coming out at 70 degrees, this is coming down at 175 degrees and you want to cool it. So, what you will do is heat exchange these two streams, you will have one stream will be the in the shell side, one stream will be in the tube side of a heat exchanger and so instead of 175 you will come down here at. 160 or 150 and there will be a corresponding rise in temperature here. So, this load will go down, this heat removed will be less. This kind of optimization is done all the time in the chemical industry. That is why when you go to an actual chemical industry, you think it is, it looks like a large number of pipes connected to a few equipment. It does not look like equipment with pipes attached to it. The number of pipes is so large in Refineries alone you will have about uh, 1000 kilometers of piping typically, okay, I will stop there.